I hate it here. What's happened, everybody? The uh, second season of Sonic Prime went out live on Netflix, and you're free to watch all the episodes now. And for, and for this video, I'll be going through my in-depth review on this whole season. So without further ado, let's get into it. Start off by talking about Shadow, because with the first season, they were obviously teasing him for what was going to happen in season two. And honestly, I kind I kind of liked how he was used this time around because I thought we, I expected to see him a bit more and even though we only like we got I'd say a bit of screen time because um I'm trying to think he was in I'd say three at least he was active in half the episodes at least so at least active in half the episodes while the rest were Sonic so pretty much. While, while Sonic, while Shadow finally interacted with Sonic after he went out of the pirate realm, he told Sonic that this version of Green Hill, it's Ghost Hill, so I also, we also have a name for it now, so it's Ghost Hill, and they need to like bring the Shattered Pieces back to this area to fix their reality, so, because, but for some reason, they still won't allow Shadow to go through the other uh, dimensions for some reason because I think it, it has to do with like the shatter the prism energy because Son Sonic is able to have that because Sonic or, or touched the crystal he gained a bit of the prism energy for when you rip for when you go back as well as the Eggmen or yeah the Egg Council were able to travel the other dimensions because they had it as well Hence why they were able to travel to it. So I guess the only way to travel through it is with prism energy Which sucks because later in the end I'll explain why but hopefully they figure a way around it because it is going to be Completely something different for the later episode pretty much the season becomes a battle for all the prisms or the prism crystals so they have yeah, you have all four of them so you have one in the Ghost Hill, which you see in the first episode. Then you see the one that was in New York City, which the A Council uses to travel through the other dimensions. Then you have the other two in the Jungle Dimension and the Pirate Dimension, which man, we <laughs> the Pirate Dimension was something else because oh my goodness, I was not ready for what was going to happen with the Pirate Dimension. When we got to the fourth episode. This is when I realized the only pirates that you can trust in media are Jack Sparrow and Monkey D. Luffy because oh my goodness. So, pretty much, this one went, I guess it went completely crazy over the crystal and wanted the crystal to himself so he just told his whole crew that when they were, when Sonic came back to the dimension and they were working together that he, that Sonic betrayed him and he was trying to get them to like get the crystal for himself which leads to like a whole entire fight between him and the pirate crew which i was not expecting at all honestly dread as a uh, villain was sick i that, that was a fun to see for a bit from some of the episodes as well as when he um actually was able to travel into the other dimension of false honor because you do see him help a little bit and then he's like all right i'm i'm taking the crystal for myself but you and you also get to like have a sick fight between Knuckles and Knuckles. This is Knuckles. And I but yeah, enough about him. Let's go to the uh, A Council. Honestly, I'd say I'd say the one that got like probably the best action scenes or like scenes overall were definitely Doctor Don't and Doctor Deep. So like that, those two. So Don't is the emo one, and then Deep is the. Uh, the hipster one with like the samurai armor. Deep, I especially like because all he he had a bit more action scenes as well as he was. Uh, you get to see him fight Sonic and Knuckles as well in the pirate dimension as well as him fighting Shadow, which I didn't think would ever happen. I did not think he would just like kick Shadow to like the next hill. That that was uh that was something else to see entirely. And don't was a bit interesting to watch because he was mainly monitoring tail or nine i keep forgetting to call him nine he was monitoring nine for most of the time he was like being imprisoned 
as well as you get to see him like be scared a lot for when he was uh he was fighting Sonic as well as when he was in the shatter space because you have this like insane sequence where shadow was destroying parts of the ship and then you just see him control one of the uh the egg ponds and he's just looking at the camera and he's like oh, what was that what, where where did it come from but sadly you don't he doesn't I'm surprised shadow didn't even do this why didn't he just go into the ship and take the crystals I, I'm surprised he didn't just do that. Why didn't he just go in there? I'm guessing there was like no hatch or something. So I I really don't know. You get to episode five, you pretty much get the second half being focused in New York City, which I was uh, I was honestly fine with because I think that was the better dimension to like stay into. So that way you can have, just have them all battle for the crystals. So you have Dread in there as well, um, carrying over from the pirate dimension, and then you just have all of them fighting over the crystals while trying to get into the uh, palace. He joins up with that resistance, and I really don't get why they really don't trust him, even though he's like, not really his fault, but then they just start to trust him, so it's like, it, it's a weird change, like each time he disappears, because again, it's not really his fault, but then they're just like, yeah, we don't trust you because you left for 0.5 minutes. I, I really didn't really get it, but it, see, it was okay at the very least. Because of how much they started to trust each other immediately afterwards. Okay, now let's talk about this guy. So, when they have the crystals, they start to discover, the K Council starts to discover they can like create their own objects with the re uh, with the shards. So they start off by making the big, big, bigger robots, but then afterwards Tails slip or Nine slips up, and he helps them to create what is called Chaos Sonic, so, I, I don't, after looking back at it, I don't see him as a Metal Sonic variant, I just see him more as like, a, one of like the robotic line of Sonics, because remember, there's like different types of Sonic, Metal Sonics, or Robot Sonics throughout the games, because remember, we had that one in the, uh, that was on the Game Gear. We also had that Silver Sonic. We have Mecha Sonic. So there's definitely a lot of other Robot Sonic. So I wouldn't classify him as Metal Sonic per se. Because he he definitely doesn't really have the traits as well as uh, as that type of Sonic. Because this one is is pretty much a psychotic one where he's just talking the same way as Sonic. He's being annoying as his friend see him, he's being annoying, being cocky, arrogant, just like straight up beating him into a pulp for most of the episode pretty much. Which is fun to see as well, because he was start struggling a lot, but uh, Knuckles was able to help him. But <laughs> he's like, yeah, 2 on one was not fair, but I did, the dialogue for him was really fun, because I th honestly, I liked a bit of his dialogue, because de it definitely reminded of me of his adventure era type beat. As well as some, uh, I'd say a bit more from like the old era of Sonic shows. So I definitely like this one a lot. I just don't see him as metal. Just don't look at him as metal. Just look at him as like a different version of like a robot Sonic, which I definitely think was a uh, a good design, honestly. Especially the face. A lot his facial expressions were probably the most fun to look at when seeing him in action. It's been, not only that, but everyone's facial expressions were great. That's something else I want to do a compliment, where all the facial expressions throughout the show. Because if you look back, you can see how expressive a lot of the characters are throughout the show. So, once Sonic reunites with Nine, when you at the start of Episode 7, you get to see nine in his time for when he found the grim dimension so that was the so if you don't remember that was the dimension that nine showed sonic when he saved him when he came back to new york city so nine spent a little bit of time there and when he did he found that there is a fifth shard so and he's able to like make he was able to like start to make stuff in that dimension so yeah, I, I honestly did not realize there would be a fifth one on as well. Because that's also interesting enough because when you look back, there's five Eggmen on the Egg Council. So it felt like they would have like their own dimension to, uh, to like rule over. Kind of like how most of the dimensions were focused on most of Sonic's friends because um, nine fo um, New York focused on nine. 
the jungle focused on Amy or Thorn, and then the pirate one focused on Dread. I kind of honestly wish we got one at least where it focused on Rouge, and then that, that would like be, and we would get the dynamic for uh, for Shadow and Rouge. But that's also another thing though. The dynamics for Sonic and Rouge have been great because even though they're not like actually Sonic and Rouge per se, it's cool. It's fun to see him have interactions with Rouge because we barely, that's something we barely get for like most games because mainly the interactions are either between her and Knuckles or Shadow. So it's good to see that these two have interactions again. So that's that was fun to watch, especially. So after they get the crystals from the egg council, they do a, they go through each of the dimensions one more time but afterwards they travel to they travel back to the shatter space and nine meet shadow and they and they pretty much discuss how they'll fix the dimensions so or put the crystals together so they'll, they have nine put the crystals together while sonic gets shadow defended from the a council that drops in as well as shadow does not trust him because that's not tails which is going to be important for what comes next but pretty much they keep fighting when nine does put the crystals together it starts to bring back green hill but the issue is though it like it was only temporary so they that happened so they so they keep fighting still for a bit but then i really don't get it but i guess there was like a lot of prism energy stored from the egg carrier and they're able to like build a giant version of Eggman but it's this Eggman but the only difference is that the mustache is fully colored or just like has like a whole rainbow pattern on it so in order to like fight back because like it's prism powered sign decides you know what I want to like be powered up by the crystals as well so they do the same thing and it creates i'm guessing it's not gonna be called prime sonic i feel like the bet i definitely think of the better name would be prism sonic so this creates prism sonic so he's glowing different colors on like each side of his head so you have like per you have like the purple on his quills you have like a bit of green and blue on like different parts of his body and it, it almost looked like it i was hoping for like a bit of a look of a titan fight kind of like how we did with frontiers in a way but the way he also powers up is the same way as it looks for when he powered up at the end of the movie to fight Robotnik, which was sick. I like that reference, but it ends up being a, a I'd say like a very quick fight where he just ta immediately just takes it down with no hesitation at all. So I was surprised. But yeah, he takes down the the he, the giant egg man. He takes that down. Almost all the egg council is down for the count and. That everyone's about uh, Sonic's about to get his final goodbye in with nine or so I thought right when I saw this scene I immediately thought of the Lost World version of Sonic because if you remember the Lost World version of Sonic he was like very it's similar to like this one as well where he's very reckless he's just going in without thinking he's just assuming everything will be fine and does not plan for anything and now he has to face the consequences for everything that was happening so that was honestly the vibe i got and i definitely think that narrative for sonic definitely fits better in here than it did in lost world because what happens now is sonic realizes that there needs to be the fifth piece which nine didn't tell him about because nine wanted to like bring it back to the grim dimension so they can build their own reality but sonic only wanted to build back his reality but didn't even realize like what exactly would happen if they were to put the crystal back like would the prism just like erase nine and the other variants of his friends or would they just exist in their own reality and his friends would just immediately come back that's what sonic assumed and he didn't he only just wanted his friend back so because of that Nai did not want to trust him and he just immediately just takes the crystals for himself that that was honestly the bet that was an ending i did not think would happen and i'm glad this definitely happened as well because if you remember 
that that was something Shadow completely warned ever, uh, Sonic about was not trusting Nine. Because if you remember, Shadow said they're not his real friends. Like even though they say they are real, though you have to remember they are completely different from how they originally are. Because remember, this is they they aren't the same type of character. Nine grew up in a different way from Tails. Knuckles, the Knuckles the Dread, was a pirate that was also selfish. Thorn. I'll just say, I'd say Thorn was like the better version of like everyone else because like Thorn actually trusted her friends and like didn't really do anything else to endanger them, so to speak, but and, and gave up the crystal willingly. So he forgets that they're they're different peep they're different characters, and because of it, he faces all of those consequences. Cause he should have realized that he needed to get just get the crystals. And not like get to attach them because now now that he got um, too close with nine, he didn't realize what what we he would have done once he put them back together. And because of it, nine took away all the crystals. I I know it's coming, and I I know for like the start of season three, it's going to just be hilarious. Like I warned you. Only that, but even everyone else in the New York City was like, yeah, you can't trust him either. Which I I wasn't exactly sure how to feel about that, but then when I saw this scene, I feel like the people in New York were exactly right about that because remember, he took the prism for himself while leaving everyone else at the mercy of the A Council. So yeah, everyone was right about Nine and Sonic was just too foolish to see that just because he thought it was his friend curious on how it's all gonna end in season three now that Sonic is going to like be facing nine and I'm curious at what type of reality is nine going to be making once he has all five crystals because that's going to be interesting because remember he now has all five crystals at his disposal so what what will now happen if he has all the shards, will he just completely re rewrite all of the Shadow Realms? Or will it just like, um, work on like the Grim world as well? And we still don't even know what exactly is in the Void as well. So there's a lot more that we'll be able to see in Season 3. And again, I'm really hoping that Shadow does get more screen time in the other Shadow Verses as well. So we definitely have a lot more to see for Sonic Prime. Overall, I liked the season way more than I did with season one, because I did feel like season one did have like a lot of fun moments. I was missing, I wanted a bit more story to it, and I definitely think we got like more story with this season, because season one pretty much just set up all the different dimensions. All with season two, we got to see like all the chaos go down in each of the dimensions, which I was excited to see. That, I feel, was like a, a great payoff for having all of those different dimensions. Highly recommend watching this. So I, for making I, I I'll definitely do a lettered grade. So I definitely give it an A rank. I gave, I give this a A rank and I definitely recommend watching it as soon as possible. And hopefully we get season three as soon as possible. I'd say maybe season three next spring. I because let's see here. It took it took seven months, so probably I'd say spring 2024 is when we, we might get a conclusion. Either spring 2024 or winter 2024 is when I'd say we can see a conclusion. But that's going to be it. So let me know what was your favorite part about Sonic Prime and what else do you want to see in season three? And let me know what else you y'all want to see for my next video. Thank y'all for watching, and I shall see y'all in the Shatterverse, so I'll see y'all soon.